Hello everyone and welcome. Happy Nowruz. Uh, my name is RF Majdara and I'm the president of the Iranian community at Michigan Tech. Uh, it's a great pleasure to have you all here tonight. We are thrilled that we can uh, celebrate Nowruz together one more time. On behalf of the Iranian community, I'd like to thank Michigan Tech for its dedication to promoting cultural enrichment and diversity. The show will start in about 40 minutes, but first of all, let's enjoy the delicious Iranian cuisine. Our wonderful chefs have prepared a wide variety of authentic Iranian dishes. The mob staff uh, will release tables for dinner, so please be seated and uh, enjoy the appetizers on your table until you're called. We have tried our best to make this night a very memorable night for all of you. Uh, after the near dinner, we ha we're going to have uh, dance performances, live music, stand-up comedy, and many more fun items. I welcome you all again, and I hope you have a wonderful time tonight. Again, happy no rules, or as we say it in Persian, no rules Mubarak. Thank you.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Nauru celebration and happy spring. I would like to thank every one of you for your participation in this event tonight. We would like to extend our appreciation to our respected sponsors, GSG, US, USG, Alumni Association, Wino Watera Center for Student Success Parents Fund, Super 8 Hotel, La Cantina Restaurant, and Magnuson Hotel Copper Crown. Thank you all for your great support. We are so grateful to uh, our special guest, Dr. Lili Afshar, for taking the long and adventurous journey up here in spite of flight cancellation to share some amazing masterpieces with us. Nauru celebration is one instance of many to acknowledge the majesty of the spring. After a melting winter, the blooming nature that comes with all creatures singing and dancing reveals that how harmonized the performance can start over. It manifests that all colors are very masterly fitted in this wide spectrum that, although may be hidden for one season or two, they ultimately rise and shine all colors together. I wish everyone a very, very happy springtime, full of song and dance. We are so grateful to host Tehran, stand-up comedian, to elevate the sense of humor tonight. And uh, I couldn't stop laughing since I met her last night in the lobby hotel. And uh, please join me in a round of applause for uh, uh, Tehran. Thanks. Guys, give Mohsen a big round of applause. Make it happen. I need way more energy. And first of all, here's the thing. Mohsen, that was beautiful. What he did up there. What he said about Noros, that was, I didn't understand a word you said, but it was beautiful, bro. And it's not even because of your accent. You use these big words and stuff. I wish I had a PhD just to understand. It's how you know people here are smart. This is uh, Michigan Tech, right? I'm here in Houghton. I'm surprised to be here in Houghton, Michigan. I didn't even know you guys existed. You know what I'm saying? And I'm so surprised I'm surrounded by such good people. And then black people, I didn't even know you were here. That's real. I was right. I was looking around and now I found you. You know what I'm saying? And I love it. And then there's more. There's more. I didn't even know there was what I didn't even know you hi. <laughs> Safety and numbers, I feel. You know what I'm saying? I didn't even know you were there until you smiled. Thanks for being here. You know what I'm saying? Here's the thing. This is what we're gonna do tonight. What we are gonna do is have a good time. What we're not gonna do is sit there and be quiet and not not clap or cheer or dance along because that's not what Noruz is about. Noruz is a spring celebration. It means the new day. The new day, it's Persian New Year. So we're gonna act like it's New Year and I don't care where you're from because we're gonna leave all the politics of the world out there and all the goodness in the world right in here. Can I agree on that? Yeah. That's what I like to hear, man. That is what I like to hear. And I know there's a lot of professors here there are a lot of professors here, so you don't want to like act up in front of your professors, but we're going to get the professors to act up. Are you professors, sir? No? You look like you teach everything. Jeez, you have the glasses, you have the bald head, bro. What do you do? You're a professor. See, I didn't know. Houghton, even the professors lie. Listen, what do you teach? Engineering. Oh, man. Mechanical engineering, huh? Wow, that's not a surprise at all. It's not a surprise. Man, it must be, it must be interesting and tough for you to teach so many different students, you know, that uh, you may not relate to, but I'm sure you're learning a lot about different cultures. And it must be very tough for you to live in Houghton with no hair because it's so cold. It's so cold, but you look Persian. Persians, Persians are good-looking people, very good-looking people. Very good-looking people, Persians. 
Yeah. And if you're Persian, listen, if you're Persian, I need you to make some noise. If you're Persian, I need to hear you right now. Let's hear where all the Persian students are. Don't worry. Yeah. Did you see for a second they were quiet because they thought I worked for immigration? No, you guys are okay. It's fine. I need to hear it. It's a celebration. Who's not Persian? If you're not Persian, make some noise. If you so that means you guys don't, you, you guys aren't Persian, you don't speak Farsi, nothing, right? Okay, that's correct. Pass mommy to import Sarah Hamina Harpazan, but I slam name me Fahmia, Machim again. Name Fahma. I just welcomed you like Persians do to their homes. Hi. I do want to say in Farsi, uh, and I'm going to try my best to like translate, I'm going to mix it up. All right? And here's the thing, here's the secret. Even the professor got shocked. I'm half Persian, half black. So you thought I was one of you, I'm actually one of them. I'm sorry. <laughs> Half Persian, half black right now is not the easiest. It's not the easiest thing to be. I was afraid that they would get me at the airport. I'm still, I made it through. I'm here right now. Half Persian, half black in America right now is half nigga, half terrorist. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Car jack, hijack, I'm capable of anything. Do you understand? <laughs> President Trump's giving a speech about me right now, somewhere. <laughs> I'm the only person named on the ban list. He named me. And my name's Tehran, and it's, it's the capital of Iran. And that's what, number one, rule number one right now, remember we said we're gonna have fun? We're gonna start teaching, we're gonna learn stuff. That's what this is about. It's about, it's about connecting. And what we've, realized, what we've realized in the world is that racism does not stand up to contact. When you meet people of a different race, religion, culture, sexual, whatever it is, you realize that, hey, they're just like us. They're just like us. And so we're going to learn today. And so first thing we're going to learn is that it's not Iran, it's Iran. Okay? I know a lot of them ran away from their country to be here, but it's Iran. And Tehran is the capital of Iran. Tehran is the capital of Iran. And my parents named me Tehran because they were like, you know what? Let's ruin this guy's life. And so, <laughs> ah, let's ruin him. It's ruining them. I got to Houghton. I'm like, with the name like Tehran, oh my gosh. In a place like Houghton, I was afraid. I'm not gonna lie, but you guys, this, you guys are some of the warmest, nicest people I've ever met in my life. You guys are great. Like, this is amazing. Like, this table, look at you guys. Amazing, amazing people, man. Ama even the professor. <laughs> he looks evil, but he's amazing. You know? It's amazing. Like, it's amazing. It's so nice. Even the police here, the police here are so nice. I didn't expect that. They were so nice. They followed me all the way to my hotel. <laughs> then they followed me all the way here. And then they told me they're going to escort me to the airport to make sure I leave tomorrow. <laughs> so nice. I had a plan. Listen, you guys watch the news. You know what's going on in the news. You're, you know what's going on in the news. I'm afraid to get pulled over. I'm afraid. I live in LA. It's very scary. I'm Persian and black. So when I get pulled over, I have a plan. This is what happens when I get pulled over. It's like, whoop, whoop, whoop. This is me in the car. Whoop, whoop. Don't shoot, I'm already dead. It's the only defense that I have. I'm afraid. But that's why, that's why I love, when I see stuff like this, I'm no longer afraid. Because this is what America's all about. This is it. They keep trying to tell us the divided states of America. Yeah, we're still United States of America. We're still united. It doesn't matter what you think. We're all together in this, man. And you realize that, you realize that people are just people. And I love that, I love that. And so. While I'm here celebrating Noru's, the first day of spring, which somebody should have probably told Houghton's weather, they, no one, <laughs> it's freezing. No one told me how cold it was. I'm, I live in LA. <laughs> they didn't even tell I came here, I'm like freezing. I, I don't even know if people are religious covering or if they're just cold. I don't know, it's craziness. <laughs> it's crazy here. There's ice, it's spring, there's ice on the lake. I'm walking by and you think I'm, you know why I'm surprised there are black people? The first sign I saw is like, city that invented hockey. <laughs> of course I, I didn't think there'd be black people here. <laughs> hockey, I was even more surprised there are Persian people here. <laughs> I, until I found out this is an engineering school and I was like, oh, that makes sense. <laughs> they love it. And here's the thing, I hate the stereotype that Iranians are terrorists. That's the worst thing ever. And I'll tell you why, because Iranians are a lot of things. A lot of things, doctors, lawyers, engineers, engineers, dentists, if they're not so smart, chiropractors, whatever. The point is, <laughs> Iranians are a lot of things, but they're not terrorists. Anyone who knows Iranian people knows that Iranians are not terrorists. 
Because in order to be a terrorist, you actually have to be on time for your flight, and Iranians are never on time for anything. <laughs> Nothing! <laughs> so, in Persian tradition, I'm going to go to the next day. I'm going to go to the next day. سال پر موفقیت، پر سلامت، پر برکت، با سلامتون و افتخار من که اینجا هستم امروز با هاتون مرسی که منو دعوت کردین حالا بذار ترجمه کنم اینو I'm gonna translate Welcome Why <laughs> baby? We're gonna have a good time We're gonna have a good time Okay تا آخر امشب هم اینجا رو ما میخوایم بتره کنیم Don't translate that part by the way We're gonna have a good time We're gonna have fun And I need you guys to have fun with me Okay? Alright So the first thing I'm gonna do is introduce two of the most fun students I've met the whole time I've been here Two students that came, showed me love The one, one's Persian And one's not Persian But he thinks he's Persian <laughs> All right, from the mechanical department and GSG, ladies and gentlemen, Saida and Will. Give them a big round of applause, please. Thank you very much, Saran. And I just wanted to uh, right away say that uh, he came prepared for Houghton's weather. When he arrived in the MUB for rehearsal today, he was wearing his bathrobe. And he said, this is, <laughs> this is the warmest thing I own. <laughs> Like it's so cold out there, but it's, it was a warm day today. It so. was warm. It was like um, spring. And so this is supposed to, this dialogue that's coming up is supposed to give you all an introduction to uh, some of the traditions involved with Nerus. Um, and I, this is my first celebration of Nerus, so um, bear with my, my, my silly questions. And so the first question I would like to ask is, where did you get that dress? That's wonderful. <laughs> Thank you, off of Amazon. <laughs> Traditional. <laughs> uh, we Iranians like to look our best for New Year and when we are around half scene table. And I'm not in Iran, I can't go shopping, I love shopping. So Amazon, we are in Houghton. So that's it. And you look yourself, you look good. Where did you get yours? Yeah, this is also a traditional. Um, I j just bought it used off of eBay. Oh. This is the first suit I've ever bought. And uh, I can't tell if the pants are too short or my shoes are too short, but. Uh, I think your shoes are too short. That's what I yeah. think. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, I guess what, what is, what is Nuruz? What's the meaning of Nuruz? Well, Nuruz is the greatest uh, holiday ever. It's uh, New Year, it's Christmas, uh, Thanksgiving, Easter, 4th of July, all rolled in one uh, event, in one holiday. It's about two weeks of fun, and all schools are closed. And uh, we celebrate uh, Nowruz with our families back home and here with our friends and families. Does anyone else celebrate Nowruz? Yes, they do. Uh, Central Asia, some, uh, I think most countries in Middle East, and also some other places, whoever um, welcomes the beginning of spring, like Japan, they also uh, celebrate Nowruz, but they might call it something else. And where does Nowruz come from? What does it mean? Okay, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Because I like to talk about our, uh, how uh, ancient we are, like our culture goes back to 3,500 years ago. So that question, bring that up. It's a religion um, holiday. Uh, Zoroaster, or like one of the prophets, he started uh, Nowruz and he celebrated the first day of spring. And um, we keep continuing doing this for 3,500 years now. Thank you. And so take me through, how does, how does the Noru season start? What, what, Lots how do you of begin? cleaning. Oh my God. We oh, clean okay. our houses from top to the bottom. Everything. We call it Khune Tekuni. It's literally like shaking the house. You can't get away with it. You have to clean everything. You can't put things under your bed or like a closet, put things, no, your mom going to kill you. You have to clean everything. Khune Tekuni? Oh no. Khune Tekuni. <laughs> Someone talks to you. Khune Tekun is very important that you say it right because otherwise it means something not really appropriate for this crowd of okay. professors and everybody Remember, here. say that right. Khune Tekuni, right? Khune Tekuni. Or spring cleaning, I'm sure you have it too, but I'll be clean like everything. So you just clean once a year? Oh no, you clean. <laughs> 
How many times do you clean your house? Once a year now. I better that's be kuni. Like you have to clean everything. That's an increase actually from what I was doing before. So that's pretty good. Okay, all right. Yeah. Are, are, are there any fun traditions or is it just the cleaning? Cleaning is fun. Come on guys, okay. right? Cleaning is yeah, fun, but fun. we do have other fun stuff happening before Nuru's. We have uh, Charshan Suri, which is uh, last win Wednesday Eve uh, before Nuru's. And we have uh, seven bonfire and people jump on those fires and they sing a song. They say, Zardiye man as to, sorkhiye to as man, which means uh, my yellow is to you, to the fire, and your redness is to me, which is a symbol of purification. Like uh, all my problem and sickness is to, your, to you and I'll get your warmth and energy from fire. I like I like the sound of that. Okay. And that was pronounced char hand misery. Char shambe suri. Okay. Char shambe means remember, Wednesday. <laughs> char shambe means Wednesday and suri is feast. So it's fire jumping feast or festival. And how big are the fires? Depend how expert you are. If it's you, I think a candle. But uh, <laughs> traditionally there are seven pot of pit of fire and then you start from one and jump over them. And if you can, they can be as tall, like these photos are showing you how tall they can be. But if you're not comfortable, just walk, jump next to them. Okay. And then when you just graduate, fake, fake you can you jump over it. them. Yeah. Uh, be careful, you might get burned. I've seen people get burned because they are very confident. And then, But you might like it. Yeah, that sounds, that sounds really purifying. <laughs> it is uh, purifying. You go so to the doctor, they purify you. So what else, what else about Nauru's? Um how does your family celebrate? Okay, um, so you have seen or have seen tables, right? Do you want me to talk about have seen first and then we go to the family? Well, yeah, let's start okay. with uh, what are the words you're saying? All right. <laughs> what, what does half and seen mean? All right, half means seven and seen is the letter S. So we put seven items that start with S on our table. They are not unique, it's not always the same seven, but they always start with S. My name is Saide, so sometimes my family didn't have the seventh one. I had to sit on the table <laughs> to be the seventh of the table, which is not very convenient as a kid. And then I grew up and said, like, no, I'm just going to put like seke, money, and then I'll get out. I pay my fees, you know. <laughs> um, so I can walk you through the items. Yeah, uh, could you tell me about the, the painted eggs? Okay, that's a bonus. It doesn't start with S. Okay, okay. <laughs> But it's like uh, Easter. It's a. Uh, it's like your Easter. Yeah, from the Easter like It's a bunny. bonus, yeah. bonus item that it came to our table as we went forward. Probably, we got it from you guys. And we got you it from a rabbit. That you yeah. Just yeah. Egg, eggs from the <laughs> rabbit. Rabbit that lay eggs. I never got it. Like how? But anyways, you're not Persian. You don't have to be reason for anything. Okay. But we need to have reason for everything. Everything happens for a reason. Okay, I need to cheat. Sabze or sprout, it's a sign of rebirth here. And then we have samanu, which is a which is wheat pudding and is a symbol of new life. Then we have apples, which of course seep, we call it apple seep. And it's a symbol of health and beauty. We have senjed, which I believe is the Sweden dry fruit of Persian olive. That's my best. And that's a symbol of love. So remember, Sanjed, love. Olives. All, Persian olives. Persian olives. Yes. And then we have sear, garlic, and it's a symbol of medicine. Then we have <clears throat> sumac over there. Sumac. Yeah, poison sumac, yeah. Oh, no. We have that. This is not poisonous. This is uh, Persian spice. And it's a symbol of sun, sunrise, and uh, I've tried this, and I'm alive, so it's not poisonous, and it's tangy. And you're not a vampire either, because the garlic. Uh, yeah, so this I'm is not. kind of it's trying like to eliminate. Set the, the base is yeah, like yeah. a human, and then we have serke, which is not here, but it's. Oh, there it is. Sorry, I thought it's me seventh, s of this table, uh, vinegar, which is a symbol of age and patience. Great, thank you. I'll, thank I'll you. clap to that. Okay, so remember, have seen.
have seen. Have My seen. eyes have seen the yeah, glory. You have of. seen the you've seen seven beauty of our table. Have seen. And how do you use the table? Okay, so um at the spring um time when the spring arrival for the spring arrival all the family members they get together around the table, around the half seen table, and they wait for the time of uh, spring equinox. Yes, I remember it. Spring equinox. And uh, we Persian like to celebrate the new year right at the time of the spring equinox, exact time. Doesn't matter in the morning, in the middle of the night, we are gonna get dressed, sleepy, sitting around the table, waiting for that bell to ring, and then celebrate. We say Saleno Mubarak to each, each other, and kids, they get their gift, which we call it AD. And happy ever after. And also, the one, of, one of the family members, they uh, read a verse of a book, which could be our holy book, Quran, or Hafiz, which is a book of poetry by the great uh, our spiritual uh, poet, Hafiz. And that is a fortune for your new year. So we like to um, start our new year with a good luck. So we read that. Uh, passage and uh, that's our fortune for the year. So I noticed that there are some poems on the tables during yes. dinner. So we took liberty and on behalf of you we took your fortune for this year as a symbol of Persian New Year so you can read and see what your fortune is for this year. And you're supposed to add in bed at the end of the... I mean it's a long, po it's a long poem. <laughs> it's a long it says one a lot, and it takes like a few weeks to get to understand what's talking about but it's always positive don't worry your year is gonna be good. And so you're celebrating the equinox with your family. We call it Sal Tahvil. The clock strikes midnight, but not midnight. No, it could be whatever. The clock strikes a time. Any time. What happens? Well, what happens is we celebrate the new year, but there is something interesting about Sal Tahvil. Some of us believe that whatever happened at that exact time is going to happen to you all over the year. So you want to be with your family, you want to be smiling, happy, looking at the mirror or water, you know. And um, when what do, I was What do those mean, looking, looking in a mirror? Do you want to... I think it <laughs> means like brightness, something like that. Or look at yourself, depending on how narcissist you are. But <laughs> I say brightness. <laughs> but when I was a kid, so I was a nerd, or I wanted to go to good university. So I would pick my hardest book and I tried to, like math and try to look. So the whole year I'm gonna get good grade. Or I would count my money, so I'll be rich. I was a kid, I didn't know. So one of those works. Yeah, <laughs> the book worked, the money never did. I have to buy off of Amazon, but it's fine. <laughs> I think it's gonna pay off, right? Yes. It's gonna pay off. <laughs> I'll be rich one day. So what were you doing this year? Oh, it was six in the morning. Who wakes up six in the morning? I was sleeping. <laughs> so you're late. You, you, you know, it. I think that I don't have money. The one reason is sometime during the new, like at Salt Tahvil, I was in the bathroom. Like really, it happened to me a few times. My family was like, you're not going to have a good future. <laughs> I approved them wrong. I'm in a very good city. I'm studying mechanical engineering. I have good friends. Thank you. Round of all right, so if I want to get the full experience of Nehru's, would you mm. suggest that I go to Iran to celebrate? Mm, no. <laughs> okay. And I have a reason. And I have a video that I like you and everybody else to watch, so you'll see for yourself why you should not go to Iran. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for that <laughs> welcoming <laughs> invitation. <laughs> Play the music backstage. Okay.
video. Oh my God, wasn't that amazing? Guys, can we give a big round of applause to Will and Saida? <laughs> Funny, hilarious. I love how Saida was like, I'm a nerd, and so I came here. Like, everybody here is a nerd, Saida. <laughs> like, I'm the coolest person in Houghton right now. Listen. <laughs> I do want to clear up some things because maybe you didn't get some of the jokes that they said. Uh, Saida never had to sit on the table because they didn't have seven S's. Uh, on the back of each one of your menus is an actual translation and metaphor analysis of each thing that's on the table. And here's the thing, the basis of spring cleaning does come from the Persian tradition of cleaning for spring. And actually, if you know, uh, during the birth of Christ, three wise men visited Christ. Three wise men, Shatrach, Atrach, and Abu Nagu. And just to let you know these things, those three wise men were Persian Zoroastrian priests. Because at that time, Zoroastrians were, uh, the Persian culture was the most foremost in knowledge. And so they were the ones who visited. And they brought gifts of things like frankincense and myrrh and gold, because Persians love gold. I don't know where this comes from. If you watch Shah's of Sunset, you'll see it. They just love gold. They even have goldfish on the table. Like, who goes and buys goldfish? No, 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 no. I don't want regular fish. I need the goldfish. <laughs> the ones, the gold. The more gold, the better. And they always die right before Noru's. I never understood why. Like, the fish drown always right before Noru's. It's crazy. It's everything. And each thing on the table does have a meaning, a metaphor. So while things like grass stands for fertility and, and the eggs, the Easter egg culture comes from the Persian tradition actually, which also stands for fertility and rebirth. Uh, and the gold stands for wealth and jumping over the fire, which I don't always think is the best idea, uh, especially when you're in places like Washington DC. Right? And they're just setting fires and jumping over. And I'm like, bro, do you know what you look like? This isn't good. You know, Homeland Security is going to be here any moment. <laughs> they're like jumping over fires. And, and they, do, they do say a chant. And the chant basically translates to all the, the health to me and all of my badness or sickness to you. And they mean it to the fire, but some of them actually mean it to the other people in the room. <laughs> they're haters, bro. They're haters. <laughs> they're haters. But it's these traditions, it's these traditions which uh, Saida said are 3,500 years and some archaeologists even say are 5,000 years old, which makes this a very old, noble tradition, Persian New Year. And Noruz actually stands literally for new day. No meaning new, Ruz meaning day. And there's a lot of words in English that actually come from Farsi words, like uh, the word balcony comes from the word balakhune, the word Khaki comes from the word khaki. And there was a time in the world where everyone celebrated Noruz, which is why we say September, October, November, December. Uh, you're a professor. Sept means seven. Oct means eight. Nov means nine. Ten means dec December. January, February would be 11 and 12. And March was the first month of the year for everyone. So this isn't just a Persian tradition. It is a worldly tradition. And more importantly, Places like Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, Pakistan, they still celebrate Noru's today. So it's not just the Persian New Year, it's the New Year of the Earth. It's the Spring New Year. So there, I gave a lesson. <laughs> See, you thought, you thought I was, I'm gonna give good lessons. I should be a professor too, bro. I should be a professor too, you know? What do you have on me? Nothing, PhD, ha, I still laugh. My dad's very proud of you, by the way. He wishes, he wishes you were his son. I'm just letting you know. Because they all, all Persian parents want you to become doctors or engineers. We all know this. Like, they love, from little kids, that's what they tell us, is to become doctors and engineers. And in fact, my dad uh, sent a text because he knew I was coming here. He wanted to say, Salam, everyone. Salam is how we say hi. Uh, I want to thank you. I don't know how he got his accent across on... <laughs> I want to thank you all for inviting my son. Happy Noru's to everybody here. All this is students at Michigan Tech. I'm very proud of you. Uh, okay, thank you, Bubba. That's enough. That's enough from Bubba. That's enough. So what we're going to do now is give me pieces of paper. Oh, they're paper. You could have just told me. This, is, this seemed so, I thought I was going to introduce 
the next Miss America. Okay, this is amazing. You could have just well, you could have just said something. So guys, we do have. If you have any questions, for everyone having questions, there are questionnaire sheets on your table. Feel free to ask questions. That what that's what this is about. And there are no silly questions. Well, there are some silly questions, but. There are no silly questions. Feel free to ask questions. We're here to answer. Saida and myself will be back later to discuss if you have any thoughts or even if you just want, you have something to say, we'd love to hear from you. So feel free to fill out these pieces of paper on your table and start asking, you look like you have a question right now, bro. Yeah, what's your name? What's your name? I'm, I'm so sorry. Do Young, Do Young. What's up, Do Young? Where are you from? Korea, man, I know a lot of Koreans, man. Yeah, no, I don't. But here's the thing, I feel, I don't, I don't, I don't. I know a couple, I know a couple, you know? It's so good that you're here because it's different people here, you know? I feel like, I feel like I know someone. What's your name, Julie, Stacy, Kelly? <laughs> Ann. Annalisa. Annalisa, I was close. Annalisa, what's up? Because it's, you can never do that with a Persian person. Do you know what this kid's name is? His name is, <laughs> that's his name. That's his name, you were never gonna guess that. It's K-H-H-H-H-H. He has to spit every time he writes his name on a paper. You were never gonna guess that. I just love when people have different names. Names are so important. And so I'm gonna introduce you to two people who have names that are fabulous, who are gonna be playing traditional Persian music. And their names are actually, one's the name of a prophet, one's the name of a king. So ladies and gentlemen, if you could give a big round of applause for Nasser and Mehdi, who are gonna be playing traditional music for us today. Big round of applause, please.
Can we have a big round of applause again for Mehdi and Nasser? That was amazing. Who would have thought? When you look at them, you're like, oh my God, not these guys. And then they're like, they've rocked out, right? It's crazy. He sang. He sa I didn't understand a word he said either, but it was amazing. 
It was amazing. It sounded like someone shot him or something. Oh, it was great. Persian music is old, old. Even the concept of the stringed instrument comes from the Persians, the tar. Uh, so we have setar, uh, guitar, you know? It's different types of tars that we, that we play all the time. Persian music is old, it's ancient. Uh, the meaning, it's meaningful. It's meaningful, it has a lot of life in it. And, and it comes from this tradition that's handed down from parents to kids. Because Persian parents, Persian parents love their kids more than anyone else. Honestly, they love their kids so much. That's why we all live at home. Um, <laughs> Persian kids, we're the real Iranian hostage crisis. Like, do you understand? <laughs> they never let us leave anywhere. I'm surprised. As soon as I come to leave my house, my dad will pop up like a, like a ninja out of nowhere. And be like, oh my God, Tehran, are you leaving? He says it like I'm never coming back. <laughs> like, oh my God, are you leaving? I'm like, Bubba, I'm going, I'm going out. You're going to go out? This time of night? <laughs> this time of night? Nigga, it is three in the afternoon. <laughs> Why? Can I live, bro? It's just interesting. It's differences. You know what I'm saying? And I'll tell you why. It's because Persian parents, all they do is watch the news. All they do is watch the news. They have surround. They watch the news, and it can't be good news. It must be bad news. If it's good news, they will change the channel and find bad news somewhere. <laughs> Find bad news somewhere, and they will watch it. And they're like, oh, 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 and they all say, oh, 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 and they always blame it. Oh, taxira arabas, like they love blaming the Arabs for everything. And here's the thing, it's old, it's old customs, it's customs, Annalisa. You know what I'm saying? It's just different. You know, it's just different. And I, your parents probably let you go have fun. I can never do anything, man. Your parents never let. You, is is that your mom? Is your mom Persian? Can she live? Jeez. She's here watching you now. Now you know what I mean. You know what it's like. I'm trying to leave the house. My dad, he said, oh my God, where are you going to go? Like he says it like he's so, where are you going to go? I'm like, Bubba, I'm just going to go to the mall. I'll be back. To the mall? No, not the mall. Do you know what happened at the mall? Do you know what happened? I was watching the news. Bad news. Two little girls, eight years old. They were both gonna be doctors. Two little girls, they're going to the mall and then they're getting kidnapped and then murdered and then killed at the mall. And I'm like, I don't watch the news. I'm like, Bubba, first of all, two little girls went to the mall and got kidnapped, then murdered and then killed? I don't understand. Why, which mall? Like what news, what did you watch? Like which mall, Culver City, Beverly Center, where, Bubba? In Nigeria, Bubba, it was on the news. Don't go. And then I'm like, Bubba, I'm gonna go. Then go, stay there forever. Like they, why can I live? It's these traditions that are passed down amongst us, you know? It's traditions, it's traditions. I don't know if your mom is a very loving mom. Cause I feel like my American friends, their parents are very loving. Like very simple, very loving. Like, I love you, Tom. I love you, Bob. You know? They just say it's like, hey, Steve. Love you, champ. I love you, champ. I, I asked my dad one time if he loved me. I was like, Bubba, do you love me? And he was like, of course I love you. You don't understand? I love you? Of course. I'm like, this is what they're talking about, bro. Why do you have to hurt me? That's the thing, that's the thing. This thing about Persian love, even the food, that's made with love. I thought there was a Persian restaurant here. These volunteers, big round of applause to the volunteers for making the food. Amazing. Did you guys enjoy your Persian food? Oh my God, it was great, right? Look, my buddy, the black guy, still eating the chicken. It was great, right? So good, it's delicious. But not all of Persian food is delicious. Let me tell you that. They have this thing called kalipache. No. Yeah, I'm telling them about kalipache. Don't tell me it's delicious. It's, it's like a goat's head or a cow's head or something. And they make you eat it for breakfast, Annalisa. For breakfast. This is what I'm talking about. No wonder. It's the most delicious. No, it's not. Do you know how I know it's not? Because they don't have it at McDonald's. You've never heard Mick kalipache. It's not going to happen. We're not eating goat's cow's head for breakfast. 
But Persian food's delicious. It's good. You had some. So good. Kebab. You can't go wrong with kebab. And even if you're not, they had uh, vegetarian kebab too. You know what I'm saying? A lot of foods are vegetarian. And here's the thing. I don't, is anyone here a vegan? Are you vegans? I feel like some people here would be, because I, I, my sister became a vegan and um, she always tries to trick me into eating vegan food even if I don't want to. Like I was at her house for Super Bowl and I'm eating chicken wings, chicken wings. And I'm like, oh my God, it's delicious. And she's like, oh, you like the chicken wings? I'm like, yeah, it's delicious. She's like, ha, huh, there's not real chicken. It's tofu. Like, why do you have to trick me? Like, I don't try to trick you. What are you like trying to convert me? What are you, the Mormons of food? I don't want to be tricked into, into your food group. You know what I'm saying? Like, she's never come to my house and I've been like, oh, oh, did you like that carrot cake? Oh, it's delicious. Panda meat. I made it out of panda meat. <laughs> How about that? You loved it, huh? You love Panda Meat. <laughs> like, I've never done that. Persian food can be a little tricky. You got to make sure you know what you're eating, okay? You got to make sure you know what you're eating because it's back there. You're it's delicious. Next thing you know, it's like goat balls. And you're like, whoa, I didn't sign up for that. I didn't sign up for goat ball, but it's delicious. I have another piece, but I can't believe I'm eating goat balls like it's fear factor now. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people don't know these things. That's why I'm saying racism doesn't hand, hold up to contact. Now you're getting accustomed to Persian traditions. You're going to go back to all the Annalisa's and your mom, and your mom's going to go tell all the rest of the white people and be like, oh, my God, they're not that bad. <laughs> they have, oh, my God, I had these delicious goat balls, and they were delicious. <laughs> it tasted just like chicken. Even the black guy thought so. That's what I'm saying. So everyone thinks that Persians aren't fun. I was like, we got to do something fun. You heard some traditional. Let's get into a little more pop. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring out a dance group. Here's the thing. I'm going to need you guys to clap along to the music. I, I don't want you to sit there quiet. I don't want you to just be spectators. I want you to be involved. That's what tonight's about. It's about being involved. Huh, professor? What's your last name, professor? Allen. Professor Allen? How white are you, bro? <laughs> Sheesh. What's your first name, sir? Jeff Allen, <laughs> Professor Jeffrey Allen. That's great. What's your social security number? <laughs> not kidding. I'm kidding. I'm not even Nigerian. So listen, <laughs> this is what we're going to do. I'm going to bring out the dance group. You guys are going to make noise. Ladies and gentlemen, the dance crew.
Check, 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 check. Wow! How fun was that? Yes! My gosh, that was, that was great. Crazy. If I didn't think they were nerds before, now... The guys... Persian dancing sucks for guys. There's nothing guys can do. What's this? You know what I'm saying? There's no cool way to do this. You know, there's no gangsters in the hood going, they're just not doing it. It's cute, though. The women, guys, give it up for the dancers, please. Make some noise. It's that Persian music. And you know, it's a thing. It's a thing. It's a thing because uh, one of the stereotypes, a lot of them have to do with the women in the Middle East. Unfortunately, a lot of the women in the Middle East, we have a lot of stereotypes about them. You know, it's like, for example, that women in the Middle East walk behind their men. That's, that's not true. I've been to the Middle East, I've been there. You guys have seen them, they walk beside their men. And to be honest, in the Middle East, it's the women that lead the way. The women lead the way in the Middle East. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, because there's a lot of landmines in the Middle East. That's why we can have four wives. That's why we have four wives. It's like, oh no, there goes Khadija, bring me Fatima. No, you go. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Jokes, professor, jokes. <laughs> professor Allen. Jokes. You got to make fun. You got to have fun. You got to have fun. It's absurdity. That's what comedy's about. That's why it's it's making it's bringing it to light. You know, good comedians make you laugh. Great comedians make you think. I hope I'm making you guys think. Think about these things. Think about the programming. Persian women are so beautiful. I don't know if I'd marry one, but cuz they're crazy. Not even crazy. Crazy people talk to themselves. Persian women talk to themselves and agree with themselves, which I've never, <laughs> never seen that before in my life. They're like, yeah, you're right, you're right. But you can tell, look, look at Persian. Listen, Persian people are good looking. Thank you. Hi, Mohsen. Bald. I don't know why all the guys are bald. All the guys are bald, bro. All the guys, you have a couple pieces of hair left. <laughs> Give it a week. Give it one week. It's true, look, oh, when you look at Persian people, all the old women, the grandmas all look amazing. They look like models, all the old women look amazing. All the old men, they all look the same. They're all like, help me. Like, what do you women do to them? Persian women are amazing, but it's craziness to me. I don't know if I'd ever marry a Persian woman. You gotta understand something in Farsi, right? Farsi is a very old and uh, complete language. It's, very, it's, it's much older than the English language. And there are words in Farsi that you can't even translate to English. It's impossible. But in Farsi, the root of the word tells you what the word means. Every word has a root. For example, if I say khosh mazeh, khosh khiyafeh, khosh hal, it's like all these good things. It means good looking, good tasting, um, good times. Like it, it comes from the root of the word good, khosh, khub. Right? So zan, zan means woman or wife. Let's use that as the root word, zan. Wife, woman, zan. Zanbur, a bee, nishmizane, it stings you. Zanjir, a chain, yeah. Chain starts with the word zan. I didn't do it. Zendan, jail, starts with the word zan. Zendan starts with the word zan. The root word is zan, I didn't do it. And all the guys are laughing, but mad, which means man isn't even better. Mad, 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 All I'm saying is this. There's a lot of stereotypes, Professor Allen. I'll give you one thing. I'll give you one thing about Persian women that I love the most, is that their names are some of the most beautiful names on the planet, like beautiful names. Honestly, they tell you everything you need to know. Like, what does Annalisa mean? 
Nothing. We don't know. You know what I'm saying? Annalisa's you know, like, oh. You probably had grandma, Anna, Anna, Annalisa? Yeah, that's good. Let's get it. Let's just name them. Annalisa. Let's keep it moving. Kelly. Persian names are like poetry. They tell you every, they're words. They're, they're, they tell you about the soul or, and the presence of the person that you're talking to. I'm serious. I've never seen such a thing. Like, uh, even the word beautiful. Ziba. What does Ziba mean? What does Ziba mean? Guys, beautiful. Ziba means beautiful, Annalisa. That's a Persian girl's name. Ziba means beautiful. Every Ziba's ugly. I've never met a beautiful Ziba in my life. They're all like, hi, my name is Ziba. I'm like, no, it should be zebra because I don't understand. It's the craziest thing. Black women too. Black women, listen, I have respect for all women. I went to the women's marches. I went to the women's march. Yeah, to get girls' numbers. But whatever, the point is, I went. I went. And I learned, and I have a lot of respect for all women. Women are, listen, way, the more intelligent, emotional, empathetic, the better gender, honestly, is women. I don't, I can't, I ha listen, I don't care what you think. That's not, I'm not even making fun. And you don't even have to worry. I never make fun of black women. My mom's a black woman. I don't make fun of black women. Because they hit. And here's the thing. <laughs> Everybody thinks we're pimping. No, I'm limping. That hurts. Mom, stop hitting me. Black women are amazing, beautiful women. Annalisa, black women are amazing, beautiful women. Professor Allen, have you ever dated a black woman? You had to think about that one, bro? Black women are amazing, beautiful women, honestly. I don't make fun of black women. Black women are strong, beautiful women. Watching my mom, I learned black women can do anything on this planet better than anyone else. I have a lot of respect for black women. Black women can do anything, Professor Allen. Black women can do anything on this planet better than anyone else, except for customer service. And here's the thing about that. I don't know why anyone hires these people to do that job. Like, why does Sharkeisha work at customer care? She does not care, bro. Like, if you call T-Mobile customer service and Miss Shanika Jenkins picks up the phone, hang up the phone. Your bill is not changing today. <laughs> the thing is, the thing it comes down to, honestly, is I feel like Professor Allen, you know? I like Professor Allen, you know what I'm saying? That's Professor Jeffrey Allen, he teaches mechanical engineering. Amazing, you know? Is that your lovely wife? That's why you didn't want to admit to the black woman thing. Smart. <laughs> Smart. Smart. See, I knew he's a genius. Never admit. Hey, deny till you die, professor. Deny till you die, okay? Never happened. She was a student. I didn't even know her. The thing is, it's comedy. It's comedy. It's comedy, guys. The thing is this. I feel like if we get to meet people of a different religion or race or ethnicity or whatever, especially if you get to date them, you learn so much. You learn about them. You learn to love one another as human beings. Honestly, I dated someone of a different race, uh, ethnicity. I dated an Indian girl. I dated an Indian girl, you know? Indian, sir? Yeah, I know. This is a tech school. I figured everyone would be Indian, but no. <laughs> it's so great. What's your name? Servish. Servish. Yeah, I'm not trying to date you, bro. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just asking, like, I'm trying, because I dated an Indian girl. I dated an Indian girl, and I learned so much about Indian people and their culture and their food and the smell. I learned a lot, bro. You know what I'm saying? I didn't do it. I enjoyed it. It was good. And you don't even know this. There's a lot of different types of Indian people. Everyone just thinks India, everyone thinks everyone's the same. It's not true. What kind of Indian are you, Servish? Mumbai. Oh, that's, that, I, I have no idea. I, I was trying to say it to sound smarter than I am. I don't know what kind, what kind of Indian, like what's your, are you Tamil? Are you Gujarati? Uh, no, Emirati. Emirati. Annalisa. <laughs> Servish. You're laughing now. He's going to invent an app and make a billion dollars, bro. <laughs> You better jump on service now, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> he might invent the first Indian dating app called Dot .com and that's it. <laughs> Amazing. You should do it. I dated an Indian girl. 
and you know about this. I loved her, she was great, I'm single now, she was crazy, she was driving me crazy. Everything I would say, she would remember everything I said. <laughs> Every small detail, right? And she would ask me questions and I'd be like, you know what, I don't feel comfortable, I need my lawyer. Like, it was crazy. <laughs> But I'm right, right? And I'm getting mad at her, but that's why you need to meet people of a different culture and you realize it's not her, it's not her, it's the culture. No Indian, no, 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 no. Most Indian women, most Indian women, by the way, I don't know whose girlfriend that is, but she's crazy too. Listen. <laughs> it's not her, it's all girls. I want to know everything. I kill you. I do say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trump's right about you people. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just ban the women, I get it. I dated this Indian girl and I learned about her culture. See, you say it's all women and I understand that, but Indian women do it the most because it's in their culture to remember everything you say and every small little detail, right? Exactly, she would remember everything I say and always bring it up all the time. She would remember every little word. Yeah, that's why they all have the red dot on their forehead. She was recording me every time I spoke. <laughs> Driving me crazy, Servish! <laughs> the thing is, we have to learn about each other, about each other's cultures, uh, about each other's rituals, about each other's customs. That's what's important. That's what's important, right? Servish has a lot of history and rich culture to share as well, as well as you. What's your name? Marjan. Mar Marjan. 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 What's up, Marjan? How are you? That's great. High five. Why do I feel like this is the first time you've ever touched a black person? Great, Marjan. It's never done. She even fell like, no, don't hit me. Okay. Cheshme babat shoshan. I date the two. Oh, we know what that means, Marjan. <laughs> Down with the brown. One day you're going to be sitting with your husband somewhere, and I'm going to be like, did you ever date a black guy? You're going to be like, um, I don't know. <laughs> oh. You're going to start sweating like Professor Allen did. <laughs> I was like, Professor Allen, have you ever dated a black woman? Oh. It was Woodstock, bro. I didn't know. <laughs> All I'm saying is this. All I'm saying is, Meeting each other, getting to greet each other. I want you guys, this is a big room, but this is a small campus. Everyone here should know each other. Everyone should be friends. We should all get to, everyone should know Marjan, especially the black guy right there. That's Marjan. <laughs> she loves the black. She loves the black. She loves it. I don't know what part, but she loves the black. So. What? She didn't finish the sentence. I'm saying, Annalisa, that's servish. You guys should meet. Meet Servish. You know what I'm saying? You married? No. Servish. <laughs> Come on, Servish. Look, Annalisa, that's your chance. You get an app, he gets a green card. This is good. <laughs> this is good. Just remember who made it happen. So what we're going to do now is we're going to have a little game. We're going to have a little game. I'm going to invite the SLS group to come up, and we're going to have a little fun with this, okay? You guys ready? Once again, I need that energy. Everybody in the back, you guys, you act like I can't see you. This isn't TV. I can see you. All right? I need you guys way more energy. SLS, can we get up here? I don't know who's on the sheet. No, no, it's on the sheet. I'm telling you, I don't make these things up. The only person I know here is Mosin. You know what I'm saying? What's your name? Pawnee. Pawnee. Man, are you married? No. Of course not. I've... That was a joke, quiet. I kill you, I need to know everything. <laughs> That's what's up, pa Pani, what do you study? Electrical engineering. Electrical engineering, that's awesome. You getting your PhD? Yeah. Oh my God, it's amazing. Single guys, any single guys here? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I meant for them not to hit on you. <laughs> I heard you. What's going on, what are we doing right now? Oh, don't we have SLS group? No, we're going to have- uh, We're gonna jump ahead? Saida and Will again. Oh, we're gonna bring Sa oh, we're gonna start answering questions, right? Saida and Will, can I get Saida and Will to come up and join me, please? Guys, give them up for Saida and Will. Or as the Persians call him, Vil, Vil. 
Yeah, so um, we're, going to, we're going to answer your questions. They were great, um, but first we're going to talk more about Nerus. Um, and so my question is, what is your favorite part of Nerus? Oh, food, because they're delicious, and music and dance. I love folklore dance, so in Nerus everyone is happy we celebrate. So we play lots of folklore music and we also dance. I'm from North, so I like to dance with the North, but then I want to stop there. I go all around the country and then I do at the end Kreshme, which is the more, more modern type of dancing. And uh, Between yeah. the house cleaning and the fire jumping, when is the dancing? Uh, all the time. Okay. Like, I'm cleaning. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then fire jump. <laughs> Great. So, all the time, dancing can ask people. Whoever knows me, they know that wherever there is dance, I'm there. And so you mentioned that Nauru's is pretty much every holiday packed into one. Yes. I don't so think that's possible. So we are missing one. It, so we did the fire jumping, which is the 4th of July, Christmas. We had the gifts giving and everything. Everything is pretty and shiny. We have Thanksgiving, Halloween. which is food. We had for Halloween. And we have Nature Day or Earth Day, which is, we call it Sizda Bedar. And so we think uh, Sizda, which is 13, is uh, bad luck, of course, everyone does. So we don't want to stay home, we want to go out, so take the bad luck out. Some people don't want to go out because bad things happen, but we are Persians. We go out, we camp and picnic, play games, eat food, barbecue, kebab, lots of kebab, and we spend the whole day outside. And then we also have something else. The last thing that we have in common is Duruga Sizda, which is lie of the 13. This is lie of the 13. Duruga Sizda is like April's Fool's Day. April Fool's Day. We lie to our parents, we lie to our friends, and we pull <laughs> pranks on them. That's look, April Fool's look, Day is my favorite day. Yeah, you look so very interested. To, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah okay. And what day does that fall on? Uh, April's first. Oh, perfect. Yeah, it does. So we can all April's celebrate first. together. We can celebrate together. Start lying to your friends. Whatever you've done so far, Start early. just say <laughs> it. And they say, oh, I don't know. You might be saying right or truth or false. I don't know. You can't just say it. But before we go to the question part, I'd like to thank um, Avishan and Shabnam for putting this really beautiful table here. They work hard. This table was at the library. Uh, in last few weeks and they brought it up here and it's gorgeous. Please give a round of applause to Avishan and Shabna. And so uh, we consolidated your questions, we threw out all the bad ones and um, <laughs> actually Tehran and uh, Saida are going to answer the questions um, and to get some audience participation going we've actually selected two volunteers to read these questions and so Chris and Robbie, please come please on step down. <laughs> it's like they're, they're the right. spokes. So yeah, they're the spokespersons. I believe they're both from forestry, and uh, so they look like they're from forestry. <laughs> <laughs> look at those outfits, amazing. What's up? You look like you were on Home Improvement. You were Al, <laughs> Al Borland's son. That's amazing. What's your name? Robbie. Robbie. Chris. Chris. Chris and Robbie. <laughs> so easy. <laughs> Sure. Okay. Hi everybody. Just a few questions from the crowd. First of all, one question was, do you speak Arabic? We do not. We speak Persian or Farsi, but we do have a lot of common word with Arabic and also other languages. Like Salam might sound Arabic, but Salam Alaikum is Arabic, Salam is Persian, and but so forth and so forth. Okay, thank you. I speak Arabic. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I don't. I just want no, to be. No, no. Okay. You can speak Arabic. Part if you're Persian, you can speak languages just like we have Rosetta Stone. Let, let me. But Iranians <laughs> speak Farsi. Yes. That it's different than Arabic. It's it's different than Arabic. But a note: south of Iran, we have Arab ethnic, so we have some Iranian that they are from Arab descent. So their language, first language, is Arabic, but our national language is Persian or Far sorry, Farsi. So they speak both languages. So we do hear Arabic in Iran, but it's not our national language. It's just because it's close. Yeah. It's like I mean, Mexican in Texas. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no. I hear it all the time. I've never been to Texas. You've never been to Texas? No. It's like Taco Bell. Listen, it's amazing. <laughs> it's, I live in Los Angeles. That's basically just North Mexico. We're going to, to Texas. <laughs> 
My fiance is sitting over there. <laughs> Okay. She just question. wanted to tell us she has a fiance. Oh, There's no on. other reason for that comment. It's like, oh, oh my God, dude, Texas, my fiance is right there. I love, he loves I, Texas. I, I love, I'm, I'm getting married, so. I wanted to appreciate him, but okay. Yeah, okay, fiance. That's one chance every yeah. year, so. It's good, we got it. You're out of luck, Chris and Robbie. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so what is the family culture of Iranian people? Well, the family culture of Iranian people is that family is very important. It's central to the Iranian system completely. Family is everything. So families tend to eat together, live together for longer periods of time, stay together, live in close proximities. There are times where neighborhoods are populated with families, like people, people, uh, their sons get married or their daughters get married and tend to stay in a general area. So family is very, very important in Iran. Part two of that question is, do you dunk cookies in your tea? These families also dunk cookies in their tea. <laughs> some families do, some, some families don't. Some people do, some people don't. The people who don't are serial killers. That's because <laughs> it's delicious to dunk a cookie in a tea. It's delicious. I don't know if that's a scientific answer, but that is my answer. <laughs> All right, kind of a two-part question here. Um, how hot or cold does it get in Iran, and does it snow? It gets very hot and very cold, depending on which part of Iran you are going to. If you go south, it's going to get very hot and humid. And if you're going to northwest, it's going to get very snowy and cold. It's mountainous. It has lots of mountains. <laughs> and uh, I think, I do believe some part we do get as much of as the snow as we get in, U in the UP. But in the, like, um... It actually gets more snow. So, oh, okay. here's the thing. <laughs> He's never been in Iran. Have you been in Iran? Yeah, but I've, uh, yeah, I've been to Iran. Okay. Yeah, and I studied Iran, and... All right, I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> but if I have mechanical questions, I'll ask you. Listen. <laughs> Help me, people. Here's the thing. Iran actually has some of the best skiing in the entire world. So the Alborz Mountains, which are a large mountain sect that takes up Iran, populates Iran, and actually runs to the bottom of Tehran, which is why it's named Tehran, uh, has some of the most snow in, in, in the entire world. And Iran is just like any other country that has multi-climate. So, so in Tehran, it gets hot in the summer and cold in the winter. Just like, for example, closest approximation would be somewhere like Utah or uh, even places in Texas. It's very similar. So it depends on where you're going. But Anthony Bourdain described it the best when he said it was the country that he traveled to that he liked the most, had the friendliest people, and had some of the best weather. Now, unfortunately, Tehran and the very most populated cities are highly polluted. And so sometimes they have pollution warnings, which is a horrible, horrible thing. And hopefully it's something that some of the students here will be able to fix in the future. What was part two? You got both parts. The snow part. You answered that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I have a follow-up. So what fruits and vegetables naturally grow in Iran? Well, pistachios are natural to Iran. Uh, lots of grapes. In fact, the seedless grape was, uh, was created in Iran. And so was wine, which is why you call it a Shiraz. Shiraz is a city that's in Iran. Uh, Champagne also came from a concept of Iranian culture, but was obviously perfected in France, the Champagne region. Uh, and other, other fruits that are natural to Iran, we have a fruit called the Kharbozé, which is a type of melon. Uh, the watermelon, which is delicious. <laughs> and I'm not just saying that because I'm black. Just to let you know, <laughs> Persians love watermelon. They eat it for breakfast, okay? <laughs> These people eat it for breakfast. So there's a lot of natural f fruits and vegetables, the dates, and, uh, and there are a section that grows olives uh, because the climate is much like Italy. And what is something you're very proud of, besides watermelon, <laughs> in, about Iran? Well, for Iran. Iran. I, Iran. I knew it right when I said yeah, it. Yeah, I know. I know. I saw it in your eyes. I saw it in your eyes. Um, I'm very proud of the cultural heritage in Iran. And the one thing that is very important to Iran is that it's a lot of different cultures living in the same country. So Iranians aren't just populated with Persians. There's of Azadis, there's Kurds, there's uh, people, like she said, who live in the south who are of Arabic descent. 
There's a lot of different ethnicities and different religions. Uh, Iran has the largest Jewish population outside of Israel in the Middle East. Iran also has a large Christian population of Armenians, which populates its country still to this day. So Iran's uh, cultural differences and heritage, and of course, the one uniting culture is what I find uh, that I'm most proud of. Said it. Okay. Um, what I'm most proud of is uh, Iranian hospitalities. It never changes. Do you, when I grow up, I, I like that one thing that I'm proud of changes, but our hospitality, that how good we are toward our guests, never changes. I think we are a good nation. And we please our guests more than we please our family members. Too member. much. Okay. They have <laughs> this I'm thing called tarof. <laughs> Remember how I said the root word of something? Tarof sounds like terrorism for a reason. Because they never let you leave. They're like, eat. And you're like, no. And they're like, eat. And you're like, no. I don't want to eat. Eat or I kill everybody. And you're like, oh, I'm eating. I'm eating. I'm eating. Please. OK, I think we have time for one more question. Sure. Well, I think somebody out there is going to get some good information after this question. So this is from somebody in the audience. I know this Persian girl in my class. And she always calls me, I don't know if I'm going to say this right, but Guzu guy, <laughs> what does this mean? Does she like me? <laughs> She's calling you the guy that farts a lot. And here's the thing. Here's the thing, Guzu guy. I don't think she likes you. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> so it's, and that's from someone in the audience, someone right? A friend told you to ask that question. She favor. thinks you're the guy that farts. <laughs> Okay, I'm just Robbie, letting you, you know. <laughs> before we go to the next. Okay, so I've noticed that a lot of you do this snapping thing. Oh. Could you illustrate that? Sure. Why not? That's called a beshkan, and it's the hardest way to snap ever invented. <laughs> Saida, if you would like to get, hold on, let's get the camera right on Saida's. You got to get good uh, right on her wrist and forefinger. Annalisa, that means you, Professor Allen, you're also volunteering. Yeah, that's called a beshkan. Annalisa, get up here. No, 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 come on, don't be shy now. Snitches get stitches, bro. Okay, Professor Allen didn't cheat. I didn't see anything. I didn't see nothing. Guys, give them a round of applause, please. Thanks to our questionnaires. And thank you all for your questions. Your questions were amazing. Uh, and uh, Guzu guy, Robbie, thank you guys so much. You know what I'm saying? The best. We have gifts that we're giving, and we're giving like coloring books and, and, and amazing stuff that now, now I want a gift. There's time. So the next thing we're doing is uh, we're going to do a little vocabulary word challenge. And so these two gentlemen uh, are going to be blindfolded, and then we're going to need two participants from the audience. Oh, what you're doing right now, you're getting blindfolded by some Persians, OK? It'll I've seen great. this on YouTube. It does not end well for you. Okay, I'm just letting you know, disclaimer. Yeah. And so we need a volunteer from this half of the room and a volunteer from this half of the room. And that person is going to give the blindfolded person clues. And then the first person to guess the word in Persian uh, will, will get the prize. So it's kind of like a blindfolded catchphrase or uh, what's the one with the card on your head? Uh, I don't know. Whatever it's called. That's what we're doing. Cool. So they have to guess the word in Farsi? And it's one of those words that we talked about earlier. Okay. And we're going to have a list of words uh, so everyone in the audience knows what's going on. I bet you guys wish you had paid more attention, huh? <laughs> 
And uh, Robbie has a little bit of an advantage here because he actually speaks uh, some Farsi. Oh, that's awesome, man. And so this is not fair Blindfold him. <laughs> Fifty Shades of Persian. <laughs> we need a volunteer from this half of the room. Do I? Yes. Oh. No. Yes. Your fiance is getting jealous, Saida. I'm just letting you know that now. <laughs> yeah, perfect. How many fingers in my right hand? And so, could we start the slideshow? <laughs> could we start the slides? And that will give us the first. Okay, so half scene is going to be. Oops. Okay, half scene <laughs> is going to be. We're just doing a trial run. <laughs> yeah, she can. Why can't she participate? <laughs> this isn't. <laughs> um, and so, so we're just going to go through a conceptual, a con conceptual round of them describing this this set of words and our participants guessing. Could they have mic? Do we have hold microphones? You speak Farsi, so you're. Hold on, no one volunteered. Let me find a volunteer. We should. Switch. Hey, bro, you're coming up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, come on. It's more black people in Houghton. No, it's okay. Nobody volunteered. We're good. A good volunteer. We, we, we got need your microphone. Thank you, guys. Give them a big round of applause. That's Steve. What's your name? Tyler. 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 One wasn't gonna guess that. Tyler and Steve. That's what's up. Good luck, guys. All right. And so you know, these we're going to just do a couple of these words. These are things that uh, we obviously discussed earlier. You'll see them, but don't don't yell anything out. Try to keep this focused. They're gonna guess one at a time, and the winner, uh, the helping partner, gets a prize. Any clue? Uh, anything that you think would help him guess it? The items on the table, right? Items on the table. Items on the table. Would it be half scene? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> well, basically, I think you would want to uh, tell to walk them through what how they are pronounced because they're Persian words and they are not supposed to know them. So I would say it's a two two part word. The second part is a past. Uh, tense of a verb that you watch things through, sing, sing. And the first one, uh, what would you say for that? I wouldn't, I would just skip that word. <laughs> <laughs> Pass. The two words, so forget about both of them. Sing. We're going to lose this, buddy. <laughs> um, yeah, but there's a lot of ways you could approach this, this riddle. All right, All right, so could we advance the slides? Uh, audio? No, audio. <laughs> no, not those slides. Uh, All right, so this is, um, yeah, the, the classic word. We want you to, to all think about how you would describe this. Um, Chris and Robbie will be guessing. Um, and here, okay, here's the. Go ahead. Okay, um, two syllable word. Um, I can't say what's in the parentheses, right? No? Yeah, you can say that. Oh, okay. Spring arrival. That's what it means. This is two, two, two words. Two words? Yep. Can you help Chris? Is it just no ruse? No. You know. can actually just read. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Chris. Um, the, first, uh, the first word is a common first name in the U.S. Tell me more. Um, it begins with the letter S. <laughs> There's also a TV show, but they're called. Based on Breaking oh, Bad. Uh huh. You, can you tell the word now? Sal Tavil. Sal Tavil. One for three. Got it. I didn't study either. <laughs> <laughs> Prove okay. that you learned okay, Persian. Explain it better okay. for him, though. You can explain for him. This is the fire jumping. Oh, this is a really long one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember the misery thing that we all said? The first word is four in English. Translation of four in Persian. 
Number four. Yeah, I don't think that's helping him speak for <laughs> <laughs> No, it does. It does. What is four in Persian? You know it. <laughs> Can you guess? Uh, I think we talked about this one the other day. It's a long one. I'll give it a shot. I don't. I can't remember exactly how you say it. Though. I'm sure I'm gonna butcher the pronouncing. The pronunciation. It's like shihar. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Good and and mm. shanti. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think someone's cheating. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Bashi. This is Chris's favorite word. All right, this is the spring cleaning. The phrase for spring cleaning. Uh, it's two words. Yeah, it's. Hune. Yeah. Something shaking. I don't know if that one is. <laughs> <laughs> Do I give it a go, Chris? Yeah. I believe it's for, uh, for, uh, translated as shaking the house and is Kune. Takuni? <laughs> yeah. No way. He didn't do a huh. There was no huh. <laughs> I can't do that. Better watch out. Chris is going to start dating all the Persian girls. Good luck. What's that supposed to Okay, next word I think is the last. Oh, okay. This should be easy for Robbie. A Persian spice. Can I can I put in? I think I know it. Okay. It's sumac. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. What's happening to you? I feel like someone hasn't been blindfolded. <laughs> we're just yeah, we're just celebrating April Fool's Day a little bit really. <laughs> All right, thank you to Congrats. <laughs> I feel like something comes next, but I cannot remember what it is. I guess, is everyone dismissed? No, that's not it. Sorry. False alarm. Something, there's a movie? There might be a movie. Is there a movie coming? Yes. Okay, thank that's you guys. You're, you're, you're allowed to take a seat. <laughs>
So, ladies and gentlemen, we are pleased to have as our guest of honor Dr. Lydia Afshar. She's a world-class guitarist who has won many awards so far. And uh, she's a professor of guitar at the University of Memphis in Tennessee. She performs regularly in Iran as, as well as other countries. Um, she has recorded seven CDs, 13 DVDs, and published numerous books and method books for guitar, which are, by the way, available for you at the table by the door. And she's going to um, sign your CDs following her performance. So without further ado, please help us welcome Lily Afshar.
Thank you so much. Uh, so this piece I just played for you was a Spanish piece, and it was called Asturias. It's written by Isaac Albeniz, originally for the piano and arranged for the guitar. Now I'm going to play several selections of Persian music, which I have arranged for the guitar. Uh, first one is Dokhtar Boyer Ahmadi, or The Girl from Boyer Ahmad. This is a folk song. This one, this next one is called Rashid Khan, Sir Rashid. And she's singing, saying that Sir Rashid has been gone for a few days. And uh, hi, hi, Rashid Khan, Sardar Kolloja, Emsha, Emruz, Doruze, Lalo, Fardo, Seruze, Le, Yarom, Nayomad, Lalo. My love hasn't come back. Uh, it's been two, three days now.
Well, my background, uh, my grandparents came from Azerbaijan, and they spoke Turkish. So uh, Azeri music is really beautiful, and it, it's not very well known in the United States. And uh, in classical guitar repertoire, we play mostly Spanish music. So uh, I have been arranging this Persian, and, uh, and now I'm going to also play an Azeri, Azerbaijani uh, ballad. Uh, inter in order to introduce it also to the Western uh, listeners. And this one is called Kuchalara uh, Susap Misham. Yeah, you know it. And it's a love song uh, talking about uh, I will sweep the, the floor and I would throw water on the floor and clean and wait for my loved one to come. It's a Persian uh, song, means rain, rain.
So, uh, in case you didn't hear the opening when they introduced me, I live in Memphis. Because I know a lot of you are going to ask me, where do you live? I live in Memphis. I teach at the University of Memphis. And uh, it's my first time in Houghton. <laughs> Did I say that right? Houghton? Houghton. Right. I said it right, right? Okay. And now I will end the program with a South American piece. This is from Argentina, and it imitates the galloping of horses. This is called Misionera. That was amazing, guys. Dr. Lily Afshar. It's a wonderful. She has CDs at the table for sale. It was amazing. And when you were playing that last song, I thought Antonio Banderas was going to come in any time, <laughs> dress as Zorro, and free us all. It was amazing. She's wonderful. She's world-renowned guitarist, classical guitarist. Um, at the University of Memphis. She's been there for 27 years. And before that, she was actually a member of Nirvana. A lot of people don't know. <laughs> she used to play guitar for Nirvana. She came up with uh, Smells Like Teen Spirit, so good. <laughs> Guys, give her a big round of applause, please. <laughs> big round of applause. Where'd Professor Allen go?
You better watch out. I don't know. He went. Lily left. He left too. I'd watch. <laughs> Be careful. You don't know. He's very talented. I wish we all had talent like that. I, I do nothing. I do nothing. I don't play guitar. Annalisa, do you play an instrument? What did you used to play? <laughs> baritone saxophone. Baritone saxophone? <laughs> that's so sexy. That's so... <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's great. Baritone saxophone. And then what happened? Why'd you stop? I, I rented it when I was in school. Oh, you rented it in school and then your mom was like, that's the end of that. And <laughs> she cut that. She cut that. I get it. Your dreams are gone. I get it. Your mom. That's amazing. So you didn't continue with saxophone. A lot of people playing, a, playing an instrument, you know, a lot of, a lot of people understand. Uh, it's it's a talent, it's a skill, it's something you practice and it takes relentless practice and talent. I don't even know how, how much she must practice to hit all those notes. It was amazing. It was amazing. She hit the guitar and she's like just playing it and I'm sitting there like, geez, this is amazing. You know, when is it going to be over? But it's great. <laughs> but it's good. It's good because that talent, and this is something people need to know about, uh, especially Persian women. Persian women, even in Iran, are actually the more educated of the two genders. Uh, in Iran, women are so educated that they actually have to implement affirmative action for men to be able to go to college. That is true. Two years ago, they had to stop letting in so many women into colleges because they were getting masters and doctorates, and they had to start affirmative action for men. Isn't that crazy? That is craziness. Yes, yeah, smart women, talented women, amazing Persian women, crazy. What's up, Pani? Hi. I mean, why? Nothing, nothing. Don't kill me, please. I'm just saying you're talented and amazing and wonderful and intelligent. And, and, that's, and it's one of those things where you're getting to know one another, you know? Annalisa, do you have a lot of Persian friends? No. No? Yeah, we are in Houghton, so I'm not going to hold that against you because there's only like 50 of them. 60? How many Persians in Houghton? I don't know. 60? Which is actually quite a lot if you want to know the truth. Like, 60 of them here? Yeah, I'm going to have to let Trump know. All right, so... <laughs> you're never going to believe this. <laughs> He's going to tweet about it tomorrow, bro. It's crazy. <laughs> Huge. Here's the thing. Um, I, I do want to give a special shout out to a crew who, you know, ha hasn't gotten a lot of acclaim for what they've done tonight. The sound and lighting crew, the sound and lighting has been amazing. You guys have done a fantastic job. I've been to a lot of schools. So you guys have the microphones on point, the video. Look at this, the video. It's not easy to set all this stuff up. And, and you know, and they're, they're giving their time to be here with us. We have one more video to watch. I'm going to ask you guys to watch one video. Then we have one more dance. And then after that, I'm going to invite all of you to come dance with us. Okay? So let's get it into one more video. Sound and lighting, if you could take it away. Noruz Mobarak? Yes. All right. Hey, come on. Solid no Mobarak. Noruz Mobarak. Sale Hubi Dashte Bashi. Sale Hubi Dashte. Oh, I forgot the last one. Sale Hubi Dashte Bashi. Toshit? Can you say no rules Mubarak? No rules Mubarak. No rules Mubarak. No rules Mubarak. I have what is what is it? Mubarak. Mubarak. We'll tell you later. Okay. It means happy no rules. Oh, a new year, right? Yes. Ah, yeah, what's up? <laughs> no rules Mubarak? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's what you're thinking. New year. So I'm Another word is have a good year. It's Oh wow, that sounds that's really pretty, pretty, but that's hard. Yeah. <laughs> 
Masala Kumi Dashta Bashta Salad no Mumbarak. Naruz Mumbarak, Salad Hube, Dashte, Bashid. Do you know Persian? Yeah. Oh, what does he know? What do you know? Yeah, Can you say hi? Salam. Can you say. Can you say Happy New Year? <laughs> Hello, Noruz Mubarak and Salim Bui Darshan Bashi. Noruz Mubarak. Noruz Mubarak. Noruz Mubarak. So that's what we're all going to learn how to say right now. And the reason is there was an actual challenge this year issued where everyone was uh, on, on, on Twitter and Facebook was learning how to say Noruz Mubarak to the fact that Yara Shahidi, who's also black and Persian, who's on the show Blackish, uh, was able to get Jimmy Kimmel on his show to say Noruz Mubarak. So that's what we're going to try to say. Everybody, I'm going to go through. Annalisa, let's start with you. Noruz Mubarak. Oh, very good, Annalisa, yeah, strong. Ma'am, what's your name? Dara. What is it? Dara. Dara. Yeah. Noruz Mubarak, throw it out. Okay, you just actually cursed out my mom. That was actually, you said it wrong, you actually, you cursed out my mom. We're going to have to, cash me outside, how about that? Noruz Mubarak. Awesome, great job. Tyler. Let's hear you try it. Wow, that was amazing. <laughs> Throwing it out there. All right, let's, oh, you, ma'am. Wow, like a native. <laughs> like a native. Do you work for the CIA? What's going on here? It's really good. So let's get everyone in the back. On the count of three, I'm going to ask one time. Everybody together is going to say, Noruz Mubarak. On the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. Amazing! Noruz Mubarak. Mubarak means, it's the way we, we say celebration, right? So we're asking everyone to celebrate Noruz. And that's the thing. It comes down to, to me, it comes down to PR. If, if we had better PR, I feel like the world would, would be more fond of, of Middle Easterners and, and Persians in general. Like, for example, a lot of people mistake Allah Akbar. When you hear Allah Akbar, you're like, oh, something's going to blow up. And no. That's not what it means, right? So this is what I've been doing. Every time I, every time I do something nice, right, I say Allah Akbar. So I'll like give a homeless guy money and he'll be like, oh, thank you. I'll be like, Allah Akbar. <laughs> or I'll like open the door for someone and be like, Allah Akbar, you know? Just try to get out there and show people who we really are. That's what I mean by contact. As we are all sitting around, we're learning a lot. And I hope you've been learning today. Annalisa, have you been learning? Professor Allen, it's nice to have you back. <laughs> you like that guitar stuff, huh, buddy? You were gone. You were gone. Where'd you go? Where'd you, where'd you go? It's just us. It's just a group of us. Where, where'd you go? Restroom, huh? 30 minutes? <laughs> that kebab will do it to you, buddy. The kebab will do it to you. You got to be careful. We've been issuing the challenge. Are you ready to take the Noruz Mubarak challenge, Professor Allen? No, no. We're going to have you come on stage and do it. <laughs> come on, Professor Allen, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Noruz Mubarak. Yes! Thank you. <laughs> come back, Professor Allen. We're going we're to have some talk with you. We're going to talk. <laughs> Good old Professor Allen. Here's the thing. Um, what does Noruz mean? New Year. New Day. Close. New, new Good. Day. Strong. Day. Persian New Year. New That's day. good. Good. Do you know any of the half scenes? Do you know? You can even say the American version if you know a couple of them. There's some grass. There's some grass. <laughs> There's always the goldfish. Not, not the kind of grass Professor Allen likes, but... <laughs> 
Ah, uh, there were some dates. There were some dates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. close. And uh, apples. Apples. What's with the goldfish, though? The goldfish, yeah. The goldfish actually symbolizes life. And also, Persians like gold. We went over there. They love yeah. gold. They like gold. Do you like the gold? Do you like the gold? I like the goldfish. Gold. <laughs> Not on a professor's salary, I'll tell you that, buddy. <laughs> Guys, give it up for Pro Professor Allen. <laughs> See, the thing is, at times we get programmed, we get programmed uh, against each other and it's not and sometimes even the news the news programs us like can we agree only because of the news that none of us would ever never ever 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 uh, fly to Malaysia ever every flight to Malaysia disappears we don't know why they're programming us I don't know why every flight to Malaysia disappears they don't even tell us what happens they're just like flight 757 to Malaysia gone back to you Bob no Bob what happened to flight 757 bro I didn't even know where Malaysia was I had to Wikipedia it but if I won free tickets to Malaysia, I'd be like, nah, nigga, I'm good. Like, I would not go. Every flight disappears. It's like seven flights. It's like programming us. I, and I don't want to make a joke out of something serious. Uh, the flights to Malaysia disappeared. The families at home don't know where their loved ones are. My, my heart goes out to each and every one of them. As I'm watching the news, I'm thinking to myself, wow, my heart goes out to them. But Professor Allen, do you know who my heart goes out to more than all of them? It's this guy who lied to his wife and said he was going to Malaysia for the weekend for business, but he went with his mistress, his side chick, to Vegas. Guys, this, not, this guy can never go home. Do you understand? His alibi disappeared. It is gone. We've all lied to our wives before, right, Professor Allen? He's <laughs> lying right now. What I'm saying is don't let the programming affect you. And that's why, for your pleasure, I have one more dance. And this one is a multicultural dance. We brought dancers of different nationalities, different ethnicities, all right here together for one Persian dance for you. Ladies and gentlemen, bring out the cultural dance!
Yes. Big round of applause. That was amazing. Wow. See, multicultural, different cultures coming together as one. That's what it's all about. And that's what tonight has been about. And I enjoyed each and every one of you. I hope you've also enjoyed each and everything that you've seen and that you take this back and that next year there's even more people and you tell your friends and you, you tell them how, how great a time you had. Right, Professor Allen? Good. Let your professor friends know. Some of these kids deserve A's, man. Okay? He said no. He said no. We gave you food, bro. We fed you. This was all for Professor Allen. We are trying to pass this class. Here's the thing. Um, I hope you tell all your friends so that next year there's even more people and more people. And that's, that's how it starts, right here in this room. You know, they invented an app. Did you know this, Annalisa? They invented an app that tells you if people are racist. Beep, beep. No, no, yeah, they invented an app that tells you if people are racist. It's called Facebook. All you have to do is read people's Facebook statuses and they're writing racist things. They write very racist things. It's unfortunate. I'm serious. The people writing things like not all, uh, not all Muslims are terrorists, but all terrorists are Muslim. It's kind of true. But look, what I'm saying is, <laughs> is, is the guitar mic on? Is that why it's giving feedback? I think it is. Here's the thing. I was actually, uh, I wrote a status on my Facebook because it really bothered me, all the stuff that I saw. People writing stuff that is just ignorant, it's not, not informed, especially with so much access to information that we have now, and yet people aren't using it, or they're using it for their own agenda, and not for the truth. And that's what science is about. Science is about the truth. I actually, I actually saw, I, I wrote a status on my Facebook, let me read it. It says, in a time of tragedy, fear and hate is not the answer. Love is the answer to all the world's problems. That's what I wrote. Uh, before you clap, uh, my fir the first response I got was, go back to your country, which, <laughs> all caps, by the way, go back to your country. I'm black and Persian. Where do I go? You know what I'm saying? No one's, it was, but here's the thing. This is what got me. Uh, it was, you don't, you think you know people and you don't, especially in times like these. I thought I knew this person. I've known him basically my whole life. And he meant it. Like, this was his response. Go back to your country. And it's so unfortunate. It was so it hurt. I'm not going to lie. It hurt me. Go back to your country. That's what they meant. I thought I knew this person. I've known them a long time. This is what they meant. This is who they really thought of me. Um, go back to your country. Uh, this is someone who I've respected, someone I love, someone uh, it's like is basically family, you know? And I, 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 was, I was mad. I was, I was disappointed. I, I didn't even respond on Facebook. I didn't respond on Facebook. You should respond to these people, but I didn't do it in a public forum. I didn't want to show them that. I called him. I called him. And I was like, hey, Dad, you can't write this stuff on my Facebook. <laughs> what are you doing? And he's the Persian one. That's why as he said, go back to your country. He's the Persian one. He just got his citizenship like three weeks ago. <laughs> go back to your country, Khadiji, because that's what Persians call Americans. They call them Khadiji. Khadiji means foreigner. Can you believe that? Iranians come here and call Americans Khadiji. I was like, go back to your country, Khadiji. So I hope we all learned tonight. I hope we all had fun learning. I hope we all enjoyed ourselves. I want to thank everybody, all the volunteers. If I can get all the volunteers to come up, all the dancers, come back. Girl, girls, come, 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 come. Don't be shy now. You were spinning around. I almost got dizzy watching you. Come on. Come on. I want to thank. Give them a round of applause. All the dancers. Hold on. I want a good picture with the dancers. I want a good picture. They were spinning around. It was crazy. Let's throw it out. Like, come on, come on, come on, come on. Um, I want all the volunteers, if you volunteered, Saide, Will, I want you to come back up here. I want to I wanna bring the board also. I want to bring Aref, and I want to bring Shahab, and Behruz, and Behtad, and Avishan. Come on, come on. Hossein, get up here. Mohsen, get up here, man. You helped out a lot. Be a part of, part of the love. Guys, no, get in. Crowd around. Crowd like you want to be a part of this, you know? Get in. Joy, where's Joy? Get it, guys, don't be shy. Come on, come on. Fill this space up. 
You guys are engineering students. Figure it out. Okay? I'm sure you know how to fit pieces. Come on. Let's not stand. Yeah, there you go. Get in closer. Everyone together. Size. Don't let's let's not. Uh, guys, let's get behind the girls. Thanks, guys. Thanks, tall gentlemen. The future of America, huh, guys? This is the future of engineering. Where are you going, buddy? I just want to let him to use the other camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he'll be fine. Here, get in the front. You, here, here. We'll sit in the back. I'll take one good picture, and then this is what I'm going to do. The cameraman is also a volunteer. Well, cameraman's a volunteer? Well, guess what? He's volunteering to take the picture, all right? <laughs> so let's take the picture. Let's take the picture. Take a really good picture, you know? And everyone up here deserves a big round of applause for making this happen tonight. Thank you all for being here. Now, here's what we're going to do. I want everyone to grab someone and bring them to the floor because we're going to dance for the last 30 minutes before we have to go and, and, and shut this place down. So, guys, I need everybody. Pawnee, you were talking so much trash. Get up here. <laughs> Professor Allen, I need you up here. You know what I'm saying? I think you can t shake your coon, buddy. Come on. Let's bring it up here. Guys, so let's start some music. Let's start. Hey, show, show us there we go. Guys, my name's Tehran. Have a wonderful night. Find me on social media at I am Tehran. Thank you. Em show show is shelly, pack a little loon. Em show show is shelly, a rumble as soon. Oh, what's up? Check, check. نوروز همه رو تبریک میگم امیدوارم که سال خوبی داشته باشین شبتون بخیر ساختم ما برشتم که دیشان و می نوشتم آیا دنگ سیدی یا بشون سر بارا ما لنگیمش کن ما ساختم ما برشتم که دیشان و می نوشتم آیا دنگ سیدی یا بشون سر بارا ما لنگیمش کن
کشته سر سر کشته لبات منو کشته سر سر کشته محمد جایی داری محمد جایی داری ناز سکن داری محمد جایی داری ناز سکن داری ایاد بدا جان دل دار و بدا منو دل به تو مستم و گرفتار و بدا ایاد بدا جان دل دار و بدا منو دل به تو مستم و گرفتار و بدا آیا چشتا تو تکه جونه بدا آیا نفا تو تکه جونه بدا آیا موفا تو تکه جونه بدا آیا نفا تو تکه جونه بدا